Mahi at the Perth Fats. Um, I've got quite a few Mahi this year um, out from Perth at the Fats and had an absolute ball doing it. Um, along the way, I've um, learned a fair bit, picked up some tips, and I'm going to share that. And hopefully it helps you guys get out there and experience such a fantastic sport fish as well. Oh, that was a good hit. And I might have a, there we go, that is a fish. Look at that. Incredibly fast growing fish. You're looking at 25 mil um, or up to 25 mil an inch per week. Uh, there was a fish in captivity over in America, which hit over 20 kilos, over 50 pounds in I think it was nine months. So you're talking about a serious growth rate, uh, which is great for our fishery. You know, all of these fish that we're catching are under a year old. Um, as a sport fish, awesome for someone like me who favors top water. Um, they will smash, absolutely smash a lure off the surface. And once hooked, um, you can see Colours are beautiful, they will jump out of the water, they will dump line, they are a very, very cool fish. And as I said before, I had an absolute ball catching them, especially off the fat when you're effectively in the middle of nowhere, casting lures at a float, and you're having these pack attacks with shoulders out the water, annihilating your stick bait. Quite a few people have asked me uh, a few main things, like what type of boat do I have? Um, to get out there, how much fuel do I use, how long it takes, speed, location of the fads, lures, colours. So we'll just do a quick run through. Boat that I've got, I've got a 21 foot American center console, able to punch into some um, pretty average weather. And if I can, you know, sit on a 30 knots, it'll take me about, you know, do the maths, an hour there. Um, Generally, I'll sit on a bit less, make it a bit more comfortable, and probably about 70 minutes. In a day out there, um, probably use uh, 90 to 100 litres of fuel. I generally get 1.3 kilometres per litre, so yeah, it's not too bad on fuel. That being said, your boat is likely going to be completely different. It's, um, it's going to take you, you know, potentially longer to get there, um, shorter if you've got a faster boat and um, you know, engine configuration use more or less fuel. I guess the, the big one out there is weather. Um, safety is paramount. Your 55 k's offshore. Weather is certainly the most important thing for me to consider. Um, not only looking ahead at the weather, but can the weather change while you're out there and you know, are you in a good position to, to handle it and be safe? When I'm out there, I do a lot fair bit of solo fishing, I wear a life jacket the whole time, I have um, the kill switch cord from the motor attached to my wrist when moving, and on the life jacket I run a PLB. Location wise, uh, we'll just jump onto Navionics here, um, give you a bit of an idea of where the fads are located. My local ramp is Woodman's Point, I've just put a, a distance marker on it there, as you can see right next here, um, we head out around there. That's uh, that should be them there. You're seeing 58, around 58 k's. Run out there, if we move north, so north of the river, we'll take that away. Um, we'll use Hillary's, I'll add a, a distance marker there. And I think your fads, that is them there. So, same thing, you're looking at 56 you know, 55 to 60 k's, and um, they're in a depth of here, I guess it's showing 154 meters, and down here a little deeper. You're looking at 200 to I think 280. I'll just go through the tools that I use on um, planning a trip to the fads. I'm a fan of Willy Weather. Rottnest Island, I think, is gonna, you know, give us the best representation of what's happening offshore. So if we look um, three days ahead, to me, the only day to head to the fads would actually be today. You're looking at, you know, currently we're seeing six knots south southeast with eight knot gusts. If we look into the future, none of these days, I'd be excited to go out there. Um, I'm sort of on targeting a day of 15 knots or less. Thursday, Friday, um, you've got this easterly here. That could be worth a look. Friday, worth a look. As I said, under 15 knots, Saturday, even better. 
Other thing to note would be your swell. Um, out there, it's not, I guess, a huge issue, especially if there's a big period between the waves, but something to consider. You add big swell and you start adding some shock to it and it becomes pretty average out there. Or something else that I love uh, once you, you're close to your planned day is the Rottnest Swell Boy, which gives us an instantaneous, I guess, reading of what's happening out there. You'll see the location of the Swell Boy here is while it's not as far as the fads, it is west of Rottnest and clear of all our reefs there. And it should give us a pretty good representation. Today, for instance, you've got your seas below 0.7 metres and your swell running at 2.6 metres. Swell, um, reasonably large, but with that low seas, you're just going to get the rolling swell out there. If we scroll down, I really like this graph here. Um, our wave period in seconds can tell us if we've got a short, sharp sh chop or we've got the long swell rolling through. If you're running about a you know your classic one metre swell, one metre seas, um, and your seas are pushing up, generally I'll target something below a, um, a two metre total uh, wave height. Personal preference, your boat may be smaller, um, your boat may be much larger, and your appetite to catch them may be much greater than mine. Really good use of the, the swell boy is on the morning I plan to go, I'll wake up early, whether it's four or five a.m., jump on my phone, check the swell boy. If it's the wind's pumped throughout the night instead of dropping off, you can instantly see it. You know, your seas are gonna be up way over a meter and I've canned a trip. I've woken up, checked it, seen that it's garbage out there, rolled over, gone straight to sleep. Moving on to gear, um, a lot of people ask what lures. Look, for me, stick baits are my thing. So I run, um, you know, small 30, 40 gram stick baits. That's a West Coast Poppers in a 40 gram in a, I guess, a green blue, which I absolutely love. And a Zip8 SS120, um, which I, I use for different purposes. This bigger, um, I guess, deeper and heavier body I cover water with. I'll run that on a, um, a heavier setup and it's just a, a searching lure. Um, the smaller SS120 Zip8, I find, when the fish are shut down, but I know where they are, you put this on, you put this in the area, you don't have to move it quickly. You can twitch it back almost at a standstill. And um, I've had the fish shut down and then instantly restart on this and caught, you know, another three, four fish for the session. Oh, that's it, straight on. Live baits are going to work. Live baits um, are fantastic for when the fish are shut down. There's no doubting their effectiveness. You can troll for them. Um, you can drop muleys for them. When they're on, they're on. They're not a finesse species. Um, whatever, whatever you enjoy throwing, throw it. One thing to note with these is they run single hooks all of the time. You get a man in the boat and it decides to, to go mental um, as they will, they're, they're definitely known for it. And then I want the least amount of hook points that can stab me in the leg. Oh. Oh, that's water. That's water. With the singles, I don't find um, there's no issue with hook up ratio. And I think once you've got them on, um, you're more likely to keep them than say trebles. What I run them on, I'll just use Two outfits, two spinning outfits. Um, just a seven foot casting rod, that's a 4,000 Daiwa um, with 20 pound braid, PE2. And I'll just run a 50 pound leader. On that, no need light leader, something that you can grab hold of um, with a bit of abrasion resistance and FG knot between them. That's the main outfit, 20 pounds enough for me. Um, when you sort of want to put some drag on them, you can, and still light and fun enough to throw all day. I'll take a lighter outfit for that smaller zip bait. Um, this is a 15 pound outfit, 
pretty much the same Shimano, Daiwa, whatever, doesn't matter. And then on that, used to run 30 pound, now I run 40 pound liter and um, FG knot as well. 15 pound is fine, but if you hook a big fish, they can be a bit of a pain at the boat. Um, I've found that they'll just sit sideways. You've got this big, you know, quite a large bodied fish that'll sit sideways in the water and you just don't have the drag pressure to pull them. It's not a deal breaker, it just take you an extra four or five minutes. On that, I have been out to the fads without a net or a gaff and I regretted it after losing two excellent fish. Um, now, it's not here, I have a, you know, a big, large rubber net that, yeah, it's still hard to get the fish in, but at least you've got a chance of landing them. Do not leave home without a gaff or without a net. It will end in tears as it did for me. Right, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Weather, we've gone through the weather, gone through boat, fuel, um, how long it takes, how far they are away, um, the location. Um, I'm sure I said it before, the location for the wreck fish ones are on their website. I can show, it, show that in a second. Um, I've gone through the gear I used and the leader landing them. I think it's time to look at some fishing. Okay, so after a pretty, pretty nice trip out here, probably took uh, just under an hour, running about 30 knots. Thank goodness for trip tabs and a fast boat. Um, got down here, conditions aren't too bad. Um, stuff like this, conditions like this, I would expect to catch fish, so that's a good thing. Um, spotting the fad, honestly, you can probably see them at like plus about two kilometers, so start looking once you're in the area because they do move. Um, set your drift, and then we'll see if we can catch a fish. Just a quick chat about the fads themselves. They are only in over summer, so about November to May. Um, what they do is they put them in the path of the Lewin current. The fish will run down with the current and they're attracted to the hard surface of the fad themselves and they will sit under it. They're not always under it. Um, I've been to fads before, haven't held a fish. Um, one of the, you know, you can with this style of fishing is you just progress to the next fad and that could be completely different. No luck, oh, just a small fish at the first fad. We've just changed fads, uh, this one's maybe about 10 minutes away. And I guess that's one of the, the beauties of this style of fishing. If one fad isn't holding a fish, generally the next one may not be that far away. And it could be a completely, di completely different scenario. I'm still a little far. I guess from where I'd like to be, but we'll probably drift up on it and I'll start casting. Well, they're after it. Fish there. Come on, get it. Now I'll just switch it back. Oh, what's going on? There we go. Oh, that's a big one. And I've uh, still not. There we go. And he's doing the aerial show.
Oh no. Yes. That's a nice, nice little mahi. Little Perth mahi. You can see that stick bait in its mouth. this could be running so hard is it just jump then got to look at it and even from quite a distance maybe could be one of the bigger ones that we've caught good fish very good fish not yet not done this later almost up to that and I'm gonna get him back all right well that pretty much wraps it up caught maybe seven or eight fish this morning um, yeah I guess hopefully I showed enough of um, techniques and you know, how to catch them out there and the lures as well and to me, if you catch one of these fish out there, then the whole trip's worth it, let alone six or seven. Um, so much fun, beautiful colours. Get them on stick baits, it just doesn't get much better. So, a great, fantastic uh, metro fishery. And um, if you get a chance, definitely get out here and give it a crack. Watching that gets me excited. I mean, for me, I'm up the front of the boat throwing lures in the middle of nowhere and having pack attacks from these awesome looking fish. Um, it just, it doesn't get any better. It's effectively at our doorstep. It's just a, obviously you've got the 55 Ks, um, but the most fun you can have. Um, I love it. If you want to eat them, you can. Um, hopefully, if you're watching this and you're considering going, um, you picked up a few tips or you've been inspired and yeah, get out there, enjoy it. Awesome. Good luck. So this is one fish from today. Um, it's about 850 millimeters and you can see that sail, although it's, um, I guess stuck a bit down, stuck down a bit now due to rigor. But something that you can see is the colors, even when dead, it still has this iridescent, just through there, iridescent blue, 
And if you look on the on the pack fins, blue, and when you see them chase after your lure, you can actually see that it's like the tip of their wings. Um, you can see here, got quite a blunt head. So it's, wouldn't call it a big bull, but it's definitely a male. They look like they've got quite a small mouth, but it's actually larger than you think. It they engulf stick baits, they engulf herring. And today when I was talking about their teeth being quite sharp, you can see there and that'll just, it's not like it'll cut your leader, but it'll rub through it. So yeah, if you look at it from this angle, you can see even more colors. Look at that.